Hi, this is speeding up AWS Elastic Beanstalk's EB Deploy. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can speed up this command EB Deploy for mainly fresh uh, instances. Okay, so a lot of this is covered in this blog post right here, speeding up AWS Elastic Beanstalk's EB Deploy. And in order to understand the concept of the approach we're going to take, we're going to have to understand how EB Deploy works on the server side. So to do that, we're going to hop into an instance. Let me grab the command right here. So I've SSH, I've SSH into an instance. Now I'm going to take a look at the important script right here. It's op elastic beanstalk hooks app deploy pre zero three build sh. So when you hop in here, what you're looking for is Docker build. So there it is. Docker build is kind of down the line here. Okay. So Docker build dash t. So when you, we're looking at this. What basically this tells us is whenever we run an EB deploy, it's always going to run a Docker build. So that means if you have a lot of commands in your Docker file, like so let's say to install packages, it's going to run through every single one of those commands. Now, this is not a problem on an instance that let's say it's already been running as already been deployed to because uh, you have Docker layer or, or Docker layer catching. So on an instance where EB deploys are run, it's going to run pretty fast. It's not a problem. But on a fresh, let's say, auto scaling instance, let's say you get a lot of traffic for your application and a new instance spins up, right? Or you manually spun up a new instance on your uh, Elastic Beanstalk environment here, then it's going to have to build the entire Docker file from basically the starting point. So it could be slow. Uh, so now that we know that and how kind of the EB deploy works on the server side. Let's take a look at the concept. So the concept and how we're in the, in the approach we're gonna to take to speed this up is we're gonna have two Docker files. There's a docker.base and a Docker file. And the docker.base basically builds up most of your dependencies. And then the Docker file itself just builds up a Delta. So most of the time it's doing very little. Um, and and th this is how it's structured right here. Now, Obviously, there's pros and cons of this approach because now there's two Docker files to maintain and manage, and that could confuse people. Um, but uh, I'm going to show you a command to help automate this. Okay, so there are two Docker files there, and now I'm going to hop back into our machine, local machine here, and show you the command. So UFO Docker base. So I'm running it now, and while I was running, I'll explain what it's doing. You see this right here? It says Docker build dash T and then it generated a image name for you. And then it's using the docker.base file, see? So it's actually building the base image here. Uh, and then after it pushes the base image, it says right here, the Docker from statement has been updated with the latest base uh, image. So your current Docker file, the second one, uh, has been updated also in an automatic way. And you could check that if you have this under version control pretty easily with get status and get diff. There you go. So that's been updated. So now all we have to do is commit it, update Docker base, and push it. And then after that, we are ready to deploy. Time EB deploy. So now this deploy is going to take about a minute or so. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and fast forward so you guys don't have to watch this. Okay, so that took about one minute and six seconds. The EB deploy command has finished. So that's one of the advantages of actually using the EB deploy command. That's actually pretty quick because all the Docker layers were there, are existed. This instance had been already been deployed to. Um, and now that there are two Docker files, uh, even on fresh auto scaling instances, the deploy is still pretty fast because there are less commands to run after that from statement. Uh, and there are some added complexities here because now there are two Docker files to manage. Uh, UFO Docker base helps uh, manage that added complexity a little bit there. So there are pros and cons with this, but at least uh, the deploys are about a minute and, and six seconds net now, which is, is pretty sweet. Alrighty, so that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like it and share with your friends to encourage more content like this. If you guys have any questions or any video suggestions, just comment below. If you need any DevOps help or support, check out Bull Ops. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.